Ben, how much thinking do you just do generally yourself at halftime of games where maybe the team needs a boost about how you're going to try to lift the team in the second half? Because last night we saw only four shots, but your impact on the game was tremendous with the blocks, with the defense. What Was there thinking last night for you at halftime, I want to impact this game defensively more than anything? Uh, I mean, really just impacting the game as a whole. Uh, you know, getting guys open, getting them on a shot. Uh, you know, Jimmy's been carrying a little points-wise, as you can see. Um, you know, got to help him somehow. Is that like an active thought where, where you think the game at halftime and think this is how, and you decide this is how I want to impact the game in the third quarter? No, I mean, the first half, we, we were bad defensively anyway. You know, so going in, going in halftime, that was the emphasis. Uh, you know, really honing in, getting the energy up, uh, really getting stops. We did that in the second half. Hey, I'm talking about Jim. Kind of, do you enjoy those kind of games where it's essentially a block party? I think there were just many blocks. If there were three point. Uh, back in the eight. Really? I think so. I think it was 21 to 20. Uh, on our side? No, no, no. Combined oh, in the game. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was about to say. No, no. <laughs> no, it was a, a uh, franchise had 10 blocks. Franchise. 10 blocks, yeah. It's a franchise hunt. Uh, I mean, we were just uh, like I said, I feel like it activated for the second half. You know, guys really started to lock in and really start to get stops and, and impose our will. Ben, how's it uh, you know, going to be for the early season letdown when you know a player's going to be out? How do you guys kind of avoid those letdowns and the uncertainty? And, you know, last year with Joel, not knowing he's going to be in or out. Now you have the Al thing, the Marcus thing. Uh, I mean, we just go in every game, you know, prepared and ready. You know, we still do our routine. We still do our prep. Uh, if they play, we can adjust our prep. If they don't, we continue our same thing. Yeah, I mean, no, they're going to switch. They're going to try and switch quite a lot. But the, the pick and roll game was pretty successful last night. What, what do you think works so well against what their coverage is usually going to be? Uh, I mean, we was really engaging their big to make them make a decision. And the pocket pass was the first thing that was open. So, <clears throat> I feel like me and PJ, you know, we got a couple of those and made them adjust. And then we, we start to see guys wide open on threes. And we talked a lot about what the Olympic experience did for you. What do you think it did for Gabe? Gabe, yeah, uh, it put him in that mindset of, you know, he he's not just a, you know, floor general. He can actually score. Uh, I always say it to him, you know, when he gets in those modes where, you know, it feel like he's being too passive. Man, what do you remember about when Max first arrived on the team? Did you get to see him at all when he was on the Celtics before he arrived here? Say it again. Uh, Max Sturz. I had no idea him. Max played for the Celtics. <laughs> 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 I always said the same thing. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't know Max played for the Celtics. Uh, yeah. So I always said he didn't miss a shot day one. Just what do you remember about when he first arrived oh, here? Oh, when he first got here? Yeah. Uh, I remember Max not being able to like, really shoot on the, on the run, but you know he was just catching the shoot and just letting it fly. Oh, no hesitation. And that's how actually how Vincent uh, started. He was in LA playing the Clippers and coach threw him in and Vincent was shooting from like 30 foot line. Ben, why do uh, the biggest stages bring out the best in Jimmy's game? Uh, I mean, it's the biggest stage. It's the time to win. And, you know, he knows that. Man, yep. You talked about the, the Pepper song, but. Last night I saw you bobbing your head. I think it was after one of the Strews threes, and it was if he would have hit that second one right after. I yeah, think yeah. The, I think there would have been no room for anybody in that arena. Like it would have got, really got crazy. So what was that feeling like just in that moment? I mean, you know, eight thirty game. Everybody was there early. <laughs> <laughs> eight thirty game, but uh, you know, our fans when we start making shots and the crowd is going, it just gives us you know first oh, thing. Okay. You, you see everybody starting. To you know, you see PJ doing this, uh, you see Jimmy getting into a crowd, Tyler, and it just, it just fuels us. What, which was that the loudest you've heard the arena in your time here, you think, last night? Mm. No. Yeah. D Way retired. Retire. Yes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's just been. Retired. Yeah. <laughs> How valuable has Bo been in this playoff run and just this entire season for you and for the team? Uh, well, for the team, I mean, obviously, you know, I feel like he should have got coach of the year, you know, 
six percent of your team has been drafting you know in the East. Uh, I feel like that was like really overlooked. Um, you know, for me, just you know, I, I talk to school a lot, uh, communicating with them, just asking them, you know schemes, uh, tendencies, plays, uh, how we going to attack matchups, you know, just trying to help the team be better. Uh, you know, he's one of those coaches who's willing to adjust. You know, the players want to adjust.